Hi everyone, Simon here. Just doing a video of parts I've purchased and accessories for my new KLR650. <clears throat> so I've been looking at getting a motorbike for the last five or six years, to be honest. Um, finally bit the bullet, used my 40th this year as a reason why to really bite the bullet and get it. Um, not to October my birthday, but one popped up. Um, so it's a 2022 KLR650. Um, in Australia, they retail at 10 and a half grand, brand new. Uh, so this one's six to seven months old, 1200Ks, just due for first service, a little bit just over, um, 7,500 Aussie dollars. So that was really beneficial because I've been looking at parts as well and accessories as you do for the last few years. So I knew what I sort of wanted to put on the bike and what I wanted to change. Um, and then fortunately, I come across a channel, which I'll link here if I can, um, on the back wheel, which is a gentleman called Curtis, who bought the exact same bike about a year and a bit ago and pretty much put all the same accessories I wanted on. But obviously then as real life tested them, really good videos, about 41 videos about his KLR. So really good to watch if you're interested in KLRs and see a really mad rider. He's got great skills on the bike. Um, I'm an, a total amateur. So so everything he's done, um, he's proven real world, whether it's worked, whether it's been good or bad. Um, so I basically instilled what I wanted to do, I should go ahead with. Um, so we'll go through now and have a look. Most of the parts have arrived, still waiting on a little bit. But we'll go through now um, and I'll explain the parts I've got. I'll try to put costs in Australian dollars. As you know, pretty much almost not far off doubling it now for US or at least 40% more, 50% more. Um, so I'll go through and talk about the items and sort of why I got them. So this spare bed ends up being the parts bed or the hiking kit bed. I've done the video about all the hiking gear I bought laid out in the bed. Um, so we'll go around from up the top. Um, so this is one item I had on the list that was sort of on the bottom of the list. I wasn't sure if I wanted to go ahead and get it sort of straight away because it's a decent expense. Um, but once again, seeing Curtis's video, real life testing, and he rides a bike hard. Um, and then just from safety points of view, so you're not dropping through the shock straight away. They're being an amateur as well, not, not reading ahead properly, maybe hit a pothole and just bottom through and then just get knocked off the bike. I'm more likely to be able to sustain the hit with these sort of things. So I went with the YSS shock kit. They basically have a kit on their website when you go there for the KLR 650. Back when Curtis did it, there were two options of the rear spring. Now they're just like give you the one option of the rear spring. So definitely go see his videos. He does unpackings, he does full install videos and everything of his. Um, but yeah, so the rear shock was I think uh, $6.95 currently with a 5% discount from on the back wheel. So thanks for that. And then the front fork kit was I think $4.50. So it's around $1,100 Aussie dollars. Um, purchased it yesterday, came overnight. Um, same locality in Melbourne really, there's a couple of different suburbs, but it came really fast. So you're looking at about 1100 bucks there. Um, so these are obviously just really simple install. Take your top cap off and everything gets done from the top. Um, so you've got all the different aspects there. Um, over here, I end up buying this, whether I use them or not, I'm pretty sure I will. I'll send a, I'll put a link in of the image of what they look like. But you might probably be able to see here. So these are just the stock pannier rails, if you've got the adventure model. Um, so there's a single rail that does a bit of a bend. Uh, $34, genuine Kawasaki parts, 34 Aussie dollars, like 20 US dollars for the kit. And it includes everything. Even ringing parts, they were surprised that includes everything. Because if you buy it separately, it's around 250 bucks in parts. But as a kit, it's $34. So I bought them because I've got some, so I want on soft panniers. I've got some lined up. Happened to find a video of them fitted to a KLR with those panniers, and they look quite good, fit quite well. Um, they're a Rhino Walk pannier. Um, so look them up. They're a, I'm going to probably go to 24 litre each side, 48 total, I think they are. But they're 219 or 209 Aussie dollars. Um, so again, like 179 or 170 US, so quite cheap even if they're not great. And now I've seen a review, I know they're pretty good. So I think I'll go with those. Um, so that's that first part. Next up, I went some Bark Busters. Um, fortunately, they just came out in the last few months, I think, the actual exact KLR, and it does have a slightly different bend here. So the bend here and this whole angle is slightly different to the stock version you'd buy. So they're actually made to fit a little bit better. Um, and I think I've got some jet, yeah, some jet plastics for the Bark Busters. I think that kit there might've been 200 total. 150 and 50, give or take somewhere there. Then just a motorbike tube, just a standard front tire. Um, from reading, going heavy duty makes them a bitch to put in. Um, 
and not pinch them and everything. So I just want a standard duty one because if you're going to get a thorn through, whether it goes through one mil or four mil, it's going to go through if it's a decent thorn or a nail. So it's rare for something to just go in a short distance. So I just got a front wheel because I can always use that in the back if I was in a pinch too. Um, next was I went, I've got the base model with ABS in Australia they all have to come with. Um, so it's got no USBs or anything like that. But fortunately, I saw another video today um, from a guy on YouTube, if I remember, link him if I can, Tall Tim or something, where he pulled apart and showed you the wiring loom. And basically, you've got three areas where power's already there, for which would normally be for this, normally be for the opposite side as well on the adventure model. We've got two spot tides of the dash habit. Um, also, a line already there for your driving lights, if you're getting fog lights or driving lights. And then a line under the seat, which is normally for the heated seats. So they're all there. All you need is this relay, which you can buy from Kawasaki for like 20 something dollars or from, this is from J-Car, I think, or eBay for like, you can see the model there, um, $7 or $8. You need that. And they all run off the one le relay. So all those USBs, heated arms, and where your fog lights would run, your driving lights, all run off a single relay. Um, and you just wire in your switches. And they all run off a single 15 amp fuse under the seat as well. So quite good that you can add, you know, $12 for this. I bought that one, but then I ended up also getting a different one, which might be here somewhere, unless it's fallen off the bed. Um, a different version of a double USB to use instead, I think I'll end up using. Um, so there are those. And then I bought, I didn't have a tarp, so DD tarps. Have a look at these. They're quite good tarps. Lots of attachment points. You can basically make a tent out of your tarp. So I went with one of them, 70 bucks or something, so I needed to add that to my collection for hiking, camping, but also just needed a tower too, because we're normally in a caravan or something, so we don't need the small towers, but I grabbed one of them. Um, then I did a big haul from um, NX Store, because they're a seller for Ballads Off-Road, if everyone knows who they are. I think Jeff Ballads, I think his name, and just a guru in everything, and real design and tweaker of tools and everything. They have a kit on a bum bag roll for like 250 bucks or 200 bucks. So I ended up making my own kit probably about 400 bucks of tools and two tool rolls of theirs, just because I wanted to have a bit of a combination and try to make a kit up for everyday use and then make a more advanced kit. You take the second roll if you're doing an over the weekend type thing um, when you are away. So everything that sort of came in here, we've got, um, obviously here we've got a fold up multi-tool with all different parts on it. We've got a basic valve kit. We've got your normal, um, or your hex round end Allen's your screwdriver, removable six in one, a three set of different pliers from them, then your torque ones. And this is his design tool, it does a lot. Um, so you end up having in here, so you can use it like a ratchet. Um, then multiple end sizes for different spanners. It's also can be used as a tire lever as well. Insert here to go from 27 mil, all the different sizes. Check the website and you'll see, but that's a really good tool. Um, they're standard tire levers, T-bar with some different size heads. 18 mil, I think they are, their spark plug for the Kawasaki. Um, some more heads to go with that. Uh, then coming down, the kit for pumping up um, with your CO2. I also bought a micropressor, I think they're called, pump. Um, I'll put a link of a picture if I can as another type of pump. Um, running off 12 volt, 50 bucks or $55 from Bikers Net, I think it was. Spark plug carrier, just a little various size brushes just for cleaning, more for at home. Um, then some uh, bee buddy tools for helping you when you're putting your tires on. A cable lube tool for helping pull the um, I guess your nipple of your tire valve back through the hole so you're not getting your fingers caught. These are the sort of things he designs and makes from years of doing it and knowing. And for the sake of $10, it can save you 10 minutes time and your knuckles. Spoke tensioner, um, a rim protector, some patches, a digital tire gauge and then obviously the two tool rolls and I think all that was like 380 or 360 or something which I thought was quite good for quality tools. Um, then we have Pivot Pegs Mark IV, um, quite expensive but again I looked at these and thought they'd be great and then Curtis Real Life testing on the back wheel showed they are great. Really big platform size and of course the pivoting function they come with a rebuild kit standard and then these are your plastic sort of weekend riding if you're going into town to have a coffee. Your normal boot shoes on, you just you just um, zip tie these on. Um, then the obligatory quad lock set. What else do you sort of use, really? Um, it seems to be proven. So 
went the whole hog. In theory, didn't need this because I could have gone into my USB, but by having this, at least I can just go underneath the seat and tie into probably that um, accessory for the heated uh, hand, heated um, grips, because I'm not going to worry about them. So I'll probably tie into that and hide this under the seat so it is all hidden wires gone. Wireless weatherproof charger, the 12 volt connector. Didn't really need it in theory. Small bar clamp, because on the KLR, it can, it, it's got the special bar for navigation and things, and that's the right sizing to fit on there. Vibration dampener, and the iPhone Pro um, case for the 14 Pro, which it should be the 14 Pro. I haven't actually really looked. 2022 6.1, I'm assuming that's right. Um, and oh, sorry, here's the other charger. So I think I'll use, unless I want to put two in, and put the USB outlet where the, the Adventure model has on the left, and then put this on the right, I think I'd get away with just having two USBs. Not many things I'd be taking camping or need on a bike would have an actual 12 volt outlet. Because if I'm doing a 12 volt pump, I'm gonna wire that in under the seat properly to that one of those other spare ones or the driving lights or something. So I don't think I'll bother with driving lights. Um, then I got some JB World High Heat. Um, hopefully don't ever need it. The tube or stick ones, I saw some people had some good experience with using them and keeping them in their toolbox without tool bags without going everywhere. Grab that uh, two tool pods, like two for 30 bucks um, on eBay. Um, so I thought I'd grab two of them. Not sure where or when I'll, where I'll use them exactly till I get the bike and can see, but I thought I'd grab them because they'd be good on our property with, a, with our um, Kawasaki mule as well. You can put things on there, so I thought I'd grab them anyway. And then of course the Pro Taper bars. So these are the Pro Taper um, 7 8 SE bars and the ATV High. So again, um, proven from different people on the forums and online that these are the ones that mimic pretty closely the stock bars but aren't going to bend as easily. Um, so the other thing coming is when I ordered this, the right hand cowl on my bike's got a crack from the original owner dropping it. Um, so I bought another cowl, 240 bucks, comes painted, car key, ready to go. So that's still coming, obviously a separate box, so that's not here yet. Um, and I'm still waiting on a few other things like the pump. <coughs> Um, mirrors, just for basic fold back mirrors. And what I still need to buy, um, I'm waiting for them to, they're on a holiday at the moment, but is from, uh, yes, where am I going? SRC Moto, um, their crash bar set and their uh, bash plate. So that's about a thousand Aussie dollars, give or take, for those two. Um, but they're currently out of stock, not making their crash bars. I had two little faults, two of them had a faults where they cracked on, a, on users, so they refunded them or gave them their bars for free, that sort of thing. But in doing so, they're then going back engineering, making them stronger for the KLR and the vibration. So hopefully soon I'll be able to buy them because I really don't want to do too much riding without crash protection. Um, at least one side's already broken, so if I drop it to the right, that's what I need to do, and not drop to the left, otherwise I'll be buying another one because I want it nice and neat and perfect before I put the bars on, not already have cracks in it, and hopefully prevent some cracks. So. That's everything so far. So I'll keep adding to this and let you know. Um, we're heading away to Mildura. So my bike's in Mildura, 600 k's from where I am. Um, so I'm heading down there, delivering a Harley for my brother-in-law in Melbourne, picking it up from Melbourne, taking that down, take the kids' bikes down. And then we'll spend a day also putting all this stuff on, which it's all quite easy. Um, the trickiest one or hardest one in theory is just a few bolts for this. Rear shock, front is ridiculously simple. Dropping it in from the top. Handlebars are a little bit tricky. I think I'll go down the path of doing the drill hole, just working out exactly where to go, because the switches and dials, switches and gauges on the current bike are positioned with a little hole and a little a little knob to rope to keep them in the same spot. So you can either tape to do the same thing or underneath so it holds tighter, but I think I'll be happy to drill a little hole as long as we can get the positioning correct. So yeah, that's all the parts so far. Um, so. If you like this video or you want to see more or see where the bike gets to, uh, please feel free to hit the like, subscribe to the video. This will be the start of, I guess, videos of the KLR, and I want to just do some nice adventure riding, camping. Um, point of the KLR and point of grabbing the bike is really, I like doing things and modifying it and having it how you want it, but it's more to get me to the destinations where I want to go, just to have nice relaxation camping. So got to get a couple of mates involved and get them onto their bikes. If not, I'll be just joining some groups and some local riders and head away with them and Make, meet some new people um, and do some camping. So, yeah, hope you enjoy. Cheers.